and our second midterm average was an outstanding, drum roll please, 46%. What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my second year of electrical engineering at UBC. Of the 11 courses that I took this year, one of these courses was a combination of Elect 211 and Math 264. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course, and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience of taking Elect 211 during the 2023 slash 2024 school year. And all the information in this video is subject to change in the future, such as grading schemes, assignment and exam formatting, and course content. Lastly, timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. Alright, so what is ELEC 211 all about? In this course, which is combined with Math 264 into one three credit course, you will learn all about electromagnetism and vector calculus for electrical engineering. This course builds on the electromagnetism concepts that you've learned in Physics 158 or Physics 118, but adds the framework of vector calculus to take those electromagnetism concepts to a higher level. To make things a bit more clear for this video, I will refer to the combination of these two courses as just ELEC 211 for the sake of redundancy. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how ELEC 211 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. Before each week, you will have some short videos to watch that preview the content that will be taught that week, called Getting Ready for the Week Content. These videos will give a brief overview of some theory and the important equations relevant to that topic, and are generally between 5 to 12 minutes long. After watching these videos, you will have a short pre-week quiz on web work to complete before the first lecture that week. These pre-week quizzes usually have around 1 to 3 questions and just require a short calculation to complete using one of the equations or formulas from the video. Each week you will have three hours of lectures to attend, where the professors will explain the main course concepts through a mixture of theory, discussion, and some examples. And yes, you will have two professors for this course, one that focuses on the electromagnetism concepts of the course, and another that focuses on the mathematical concepts. The professor who will be leading a certain lecture will change from day to day, but generally speaking, the math-focused professor will be more present in the first half of the course, while the electromagnetism-focused professor will be more present near the second half of the course. Skeleton notes were posted for us before each lecture for us to annotate in class, and the in-class class notes or annotated lecture slides were posted after each lecture. You will also have a two hour tutorial session every two weeks, which can either be used for a tutorial lecture or for a midterm exam. During these tutorial sessions, each professor will bring a couple of practice problems to work through during the session. In terms of homework, you will have weekly web work assignments that generally consist of five to nine questions and are designed to help you practice the concepts that were taught during the lectures. For me, these assignments generally took between two to six hours to complete each week, depending on how difficult the questions were. Web work assignments are usually released at the end of the week on Thursday afternoon, and were due the following week on Friday. In terms of the required materials for this course, you don't need to purchase any textbooks or software for ELEC 211, and you only really need something to take notes with and a computer to do your web work assignments on. Now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in ELEC 211. You'll start with reviewing some basic electrostatics concepts from Physics 158 or Physics 118, including Coulomb's law, electric field intensity, work and potential, electric flux, and electric flux density. This will be complemented with some math-focused lectures related to parameterization, which is a really important topic in this course, electric field superposition, line integrals, and how to calculate flux. These vector calculus concepts draw heavily from what you've learned in Math 253 and your integration knowledge, so make sure you feel somewhat confident in those before heading into this course. After the first midterm, you'll cover the concepts of current and current density, electric dipoles, the electrostatic properties of capacitors, the biot safford law, and Ampere's circuital law. The accompanying math concept that you'll learn with these concepts is the calculation of flux through certain surfaces using the divergence theorem, which involves a triple integral and closing a revolved surface that is not enclosed. In reality, it's a lot more complicated than that, but you'll learn how it works soon enough. This is also the point in the course where you'll be transitioning from electrostatics to magnetostatics, and the math professor will be around a lot less. This will bring you to around the second midterm exam. And after the second midterm, you'll cover magnetic flux and magnetic flux density, magnetic forces and torques, 
magnetic materials and boundary conditions, how to solve magnetic circuits, Faraday's law, induced EMFs, inductors and inductance, and displacement current, with the last accompanying math lecture covering Stokes' theorem, which has applications to problems involving loops and capping surfaces. And that's pretty much everything that you're going to learn in ELEC 211 and Math 264. I know it probably sounds like a lot of content, but just remember to take things week by week so you don't end up feeling overwhelmed. In terms of the grading scheme for ELEC 211, here's the breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. Starting with your pre-week quizzes, these are weighted at 5% of your overall grade, and your webwork assignments are weighted at 15%. You will have around 11 webwork assignments in total, and your two lowest assignments will be dropped. In terms of exams, you will have two midterm exams worth 10% and 20%, which will automatically be adjusted for the best score, and a final exam worth 50%. If your final final exam grade is higher than either of your midterm exams, that midterm grade will be replaced by your final exam grade. Additionally, you must have at least a 50% weighted average between the midterms and the final exam in order to pass the course. The exams will have a mix of electromagnetism and math-focused problems, with around two-thirds of the exam dedicated to electromagnetism questions and a third dedicated to vector calculus problems. These questions were mostly long answer problems with multiple parts to them, and we were not allowed to use any calculators on these exams. We received a very comprehensive formula sheet for our exams that looked like this, and we were expected to simplify our answers to a reasonable extent. For our midterms, we had 90 minutes to write them, and for the final exam, we had two and a half hours. All right, now on to some survival tips, advice, and miscellaneous things to know before heading into ELEC 211. First off, let's set some expectations for ELEC 211 with our midterm averages for this year. Our first midterm average was a very impressive 62%, and our second midterm average was an outstanding, drumroll please, 46%. And because I am what some people call mentally challenged, I managed to score below average on both of these midterms. Oh, and there was basically no scaling in this course. Needless to say, I think you already have a pretty good idea of what this course will be like. Right at the beginning of the course when you start doing your pre-week quizzes and your web work assignments, I would highly suggest having the course formula sheet printed out and right next to you while you're doing these assignments. This will help you get used to using it and knowing where everything is, and will help you simulate a test-taking environment, as this formula sheet is the only resource that you're going to receive for the exams. Speaking of those webwork assignments, it's helpful to know that the questions on the webwork assignments are not of the same format or type as the questions that show up on the exams. However, many of us did find that it did help to review or redo the webwork assignments before each of the exams to prepare you for the exams. Additionally, the course instructional team did provide us with a previous year's exam for practice before each of our midterms in the final exam to help us get a sense of the types of questions that could show up on the exams. Last note about this course, if you're in second year electrical engineering taking this course, it will most likely be during the same semester as ELEC 291, which is a course that will definitely require a lot of your time. That being said, from my friends who learned it the hard way, try your best not to skip ELEC 211 classes to work on ELEC 291 unless it is absolutely necessary to do so. There are no recordings of the lectures and the notes that are posted after the class are not necessarily the easiest to follow if you don't have context to what was going on during class. And for those of you who are curious, I scored a 65% in ELEC 211 and the class average for my section was 64%. Considering that this course was tied with CPEN 211 as my lowest grade in my university career so far, and that Philosophy 211 was my highest grade this year, I think there's something weird about the 211 course code. And that's pretty much everything you need to know before going into ELEC 211 and Math 264. I really, really hope this video helps you guys out so you guys don't have to suffer as much as I did in second year. And as a thanks for sticking all the way to the end of the video, I'll let you know that the next course that I'll be covering will be ELEC 221. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to notify whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.